Hi, today I am talking about quadruped movement. It is very important to know the anatomy of a quadruped for an animator. You have to see this. You have to see this video to understand about the quadruped movement. So let's discuss. Thank you. After seeing this animation, I just want to start thinking about the quadruped movement. Mm, the animation is very poor. Uh, the thing is that uh, because of uh, because the animator don't know the bone structure, the anatomy of quadruped. The main thing is that for that reason the animation is so poor. Today I am going to show you the relation between quadruped and biped. Uh, this is the human hand and this is the horse hand, right? So I just make the relation. This is scapula. Scapula goes to here. It is scapula. This one is our bones. This is another. And this radius and ulna goes here, right? These bones, it makes bigger to here and the lower part is to here and the all the finger goes and make the things like this so this is the relation so i just open my maya uh, here you can understand how the thing so this is human hand. And if I make it like this, this change like this way, right? So this is horse. So by morphing, I can understand easily which part goes to where. This is human hand and this is human hand, this is dog, this is hawk, this is sheep and the last one is horse. So horse goes to sheep and then hawk and then dog and then human, right? So if I show like this, it is like this way, horse. So now you can easily understand which place go to where, right? This bone, see, see this one, how it react. It is now make smaller, right? So same case for human leg also. This is the leg, right? and it goes to horse leg. So think about this area, this area, this ankle area, how it react. Here it is so small and it goes big. But generally we think we are very, con the main thing is our confusion is We think that this area same as this area. No, not that at all. If you think about the animation, the morphing, how it is, that area goes into that, that area, right? Right, that area. So that means 
this area goes to this area right and this area goes to this area this is not true right so that's why it is like this so now if any animator think and understand about this concept he can easily do the good animation so i just show you some good animation good case study from narnia thank you welcome I understand that the process of green screen and how they're going to use my goat legs is um, you get eye of toad, tongue of newt, and it's all magical. It's not computers at all. So he's in makeup from his waist up, so we had to add the goat legs. We went down the road of using motion capture, and we decided not just to do motion capture in a stage, but we decided to do it on set. Not just on set, but we would do it outside. We set up cameras to gather his data. We actually did it in the Czech Republic running around in the snow. If you want to have the human portion filmed on set, you've got to have the upper body move in a way that makes sense. When we put the goat legs in, it all kind of works together. At the end of the day, the simple thing worked out that walking on your tiptoes forces your body to move in a way that is much the same way as a, the kind of reverse leg that you see on a goat. I have to wear the most hideous green screen pants you've ever seen in your life. Crotty. It's like lycra dirty nonsense. He had little tracking marks all over his legs that they would then use for tracking to digitally composite CGI font legs over his own legs. The CG element is tracked so that we, we know where his hips are. The legs and the hips are attached to the body and then we go in and we lay in the foot placement underneath. There's a lot of animation work that goes into getting those feet placed and really feeling the weight and the compression. You need to feel that in the heel and you need to feel it in, the, in all over the leg. As a human, sometimes he would daintily put his foot down in it, but we needed more of a feeling of a heavy hoof. And so the first thing we would do was lock down the feet. And then the real trick is as it comes down and it makes contact, that's when you really want to see the ankle compress. And that really sells the weight of it. Once we're happy with the performance, then there's a whole nother slew of technical people that have to go in and then make sure that the fur is working or that when they step on grass, the grass moves, or if they're moving in the snow, you get footprints and snow gets kicked up. Different artists work on the color of the hair, whether the hair is more transparent or less transparent, thicker or denser. Also, we add a little bit of snow to Mr. Thomas's fur. That helps us integrate his legs and feet into the snowy plate as well. Each one of these shots has you know, hundreds of people that were involved in its creation.